Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another episode of What You Need to Know. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about this. The AKG DMS 300. So stay tuned. This is a DMS 300 by AKG, and this is pretty much a wireless microphone system that AKG makes. And recently, AKG has released two fairly new systems into the market, AKG DMS 100 and AKG DMS 300. Today, we're going to be talking about the DMS 300, but almost everything applies to the 100. Um, both systems, they're pretty much almost exactly the same, with a few key differences, we'll try to point those out. So this, obviously we got this from Amazon. This is not a sponsored video, no one paid us for this video, no one sent us this item. We bought this item from Amazon Warehouse Deals. We'll talk about it, uh, we used it, we'll talk about it and we'll give you our opinions. But just let you know, this is gonna be a real user opinion um, without any influences from anybody else. But anyways, the point is that we're gonna be talking about this system, which is 300, okay? And I'm just gonna uh, to give you a quick uh, information here real quick. There's two main big differences. Um, um, with between the 200 and 100. There are a lot of small differences, but they're pretty negligible depending on what you think. But um, the two big differences are, number one, on the DMS 300 system, the uh, it has the antennas are external. There are two external sticking antennas on DMS 300. And then on the DMS 300, you can also use up to eight coexisting systems. On the 100, you can only use up to four. So keep that in mind. Um, other small differences are like, it has an ID number here for instead of like color coding, but I mean, pretty much it's all gonna be the same. So make sure you keep that in mind when we talk about it. Um, so before we get into it, let me just give you the quick marketing hype they put on the box. Vivid display, unrivaled security, pristine 24 bit 48 kilohertz sound, simple to use, rack mountable, rack gears are not included. Um, adaptive frequency channel selection, it's got diversity, three kinds, antenna time frequency. The carrier frequency is license free, it's less than 2.9 milliseconds of latency and roughly about 100 feet of working range. All right, <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about the uh, body pack system, but these systems pretty much come in two different uh, configurations. You can get a handheld microphone or you can get a body pack configuration. Um, today, we're gonna to talk about body pack, but just know that you can get it in a handheld configuration. Um, so I pretty much put this back together. Uh, we opened it, used it for, I think it was three-ish weeks, and we put it back together because we're gonna return it, and you have to wait to the end of the video to figure out why. So uh, when you open it, you get two little antennas. Um, these are pretty much the Wi-Fi, old school router Wi-Fi antennas um, that you get. Keep in mind, this is a 2.4 gigahertz digital system, okay? Um, we'll talk more about that later. But here is the body pack, the portable body pack that comes, okay? Um, this has got like a piano black type finish in the front, obviously the logo, there's a little tiny little screen here we'll show you later. Um, sticker in the back, it's pretty much all plastic. It's got a, a metal wire belt clip, power button on top. It's got the TA4F connector. Um, and the way you open it is you press down and push out. Press down where the little logo is and press out. And this thing is powered by two AA batteries. Two AA batteries are included in this, at least in the one that I got. Um, let's take these out. Two AA batteries here. Right, so two AA batteries are included in this kit that you get. Um, there is a link pairing button right here, and then this is the sensitivity button, or sensitivity knob that you can turn to adjust the sensitivity. In order to turn it on, um, there's a power button here that serves as the mute button, but in order to turn it on, you have to hold this button for a few seconds and then it will turn on, I think. Unless I installed the batteries incorrectly. Let's see here. Did we install the batteries backwards? Yeah, no we didn't. So the battery's going this way. This goes in this way. Let's see, why does this not turn on? There you go, all right. So battery turns on, I mean, system turns on. Obviously you can see it's got a three bar LED status gauge for battery life and little ID. Um, so here's a quick tip. If you hold this button for a second, it will go to mute in the uh, little red LED should turn red, or little LED should turn red, I mean. If you press it just real quick, it will not unmute. Um, you have to actually press and hold for about a second, and then it should mute and unmute. There you go. Okay, so if you just do a quick press, 
won't do anything. Make sure you keep that in mind. But that is pretty much the body pack system. The build is almost entirely plastic, feels relatively pretty cheap. Um, probably the cheapest feeling build quality I've ever felt in the Pro Audio pack. Um, on the uh, main mainstream systems. So the model number on this one is PT300. Um, so AKG has a pretty fairly uh, naming scheme. Um, pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. PT means Portable Transmitter 300, okay? You get that, obviously you get the manual, which almost nobody reads. Let's talk about this receiver here real quick. <clears throat> So this is the receiver for the uh, DMS-200 system. It's got two external antenna ports here that you stick the antennas onto like so, right? It has a uh, same type of piano black type finish screen on the front. It's a fingerprint magnet, obviously. A um, little button here, that's a little knob that also serves as a button. Um, and that's pretty much all the controls you really get on the front. We'll turn it on and you'll see the LED. Um, but the build quality on this thing almost is almost entirely plastic too. Feels relatively pretty cheap. Probably the cheapest and lightest pro audio receiver that we have ever touched or felt with or used uh, in the mainstream brands. Remember, keep that in mind. Oh, there's a power button right here under this um, antenna. So keep that in mind, <clears throat> um, let's take a look at the back here. It's got a barrel port for a nine volt DC in, uses roughly 1.3 amps. Um, it's got two RJ12 ports for sync in, sync out. And what the purpose of that is, if you have multiple systems, you can link them together. For instance, if I had two or th let's say I had three systems, put this system here, stack the other system on top, stack the third system on top. On the first system, you would come out of sync out and go to sync in of the second one and come out of sync in of the second one and go in to sync in of the third one and then go out of sync out of the third one and go sync in to the first one, okay? That way it pretty much creates an entire loop and they can all communicate together. Um, that is primarily um, used for when you're using multiple systems together. Like I said, on the DMS-300 system, you can use up to eight systems together, um, or so they say. But the, um, the way you can do that is kind of, you can, uh, what do you call it, link them together and use them simultaneously. The good thing about that, they can all coordinate with each other, channel, time, frequency, whatever they're using, so that when they're all trying to get the same clear channels and time slots to transmit on, they're not fighting each other and they're working as one unison, unison, unit, one unit instead of three different units, pretty much. Like I said, you can do that up to eight, so it's not just three. Here's the unbalanced port, so if you need unbalanced, here is the XLR port. Um, if you need a balanced. And then it has an attenuation um, switch. You can go from zero dB or negative 30 dB. I'll show you a little bit more of that up closely. But it's got little rubber feet on the bottom um, that helps prevent from sliding too much. But that's, that's pretty much it. And if you ever get this, you pick it up and see, and you'll see why the build, or you'll, you'll see what I mean when I say the build quality is extremely cheap and feels like the cheapest thing you've ever felt. Um, for a pro audio receiver. Here's the power brick. The power brick, nothing too fancy. Standard wall wart, non-polarized plug. Let's plug it in. Let me get this. Plug it in right here, All right? So we plugged it in. I should power on, there you go. Plug it in and that's what happens when you power it on. Um, so I know I keep, have, it, keep it, have it right here for name purposes of the review, but um, Minimum working distance is really, you really want to keep it about six feet away in order, for, or about, yeah, roughly about six feet away so they can work properly. Um, but also in here is the cable for your instrument. See this little TA4F connector plug in here, and then you have your quarter inch jack right here for, I don't know, guitar, violin, whatever you're playing. And then it's got this RJ12 cable um, that you can use to link them all together. We're not going to talk about this one too much, so we're going to put this back. All right, guys, so that's pretty much what you get in the box when you get the kit or when you buy the kit. Um, so let's talk about uh, microphone systems in general. So when it comes to wireless microphone systems, you, there are pretty much two kinds. There's analog and there's digital. Analog's usually a little bit older, but analog has a little uh, benefit to it where it's a little faster. Um, generally in terms of latency. So this one has about 2.9 milliseconds, which is fairly low, really low actually. Um, analog is even lower than that. Um, but the, di the benefit to digital, um, there's a lot. Uh, it's sending one and zeros um, in the um, audio stream path here. 
So it, there's no companding, there's a lot less compression, there's almost no compression um, in that, and there's a lot less, subs less susceptible to interference and um, audio artifacts. So when you send an analog signal, pretty much the waveform gets sent from a transmitter to the receiver. And that waveform is a little bit um, different depending on what audio is going through there. So it can expand or I don't want to say expanding to contract, but it's pretty much companding. Um, and the audio, the receiver has to interpret it and then get it out, right? So because it's flying through the air, obviously, susceptible to interference, it may have artifacting and stuff like that. Digital systems, one to zero. When, when it gets sent from the transmitter and it's a one, and when it ends up here, it's pretty much zero. Not exactly like that, but that's pretty much the basic idea. So um, it'll generally sound better um, given the same type of system, same class of system. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, the other benefit to this one, it says it says um, in the three kinds of diversity, time, frequency, and space. Space, two antennas, uh, frequency, it can hop around frequencies. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. And time. So what does that mean? Um, in a digital system like this, you can actually transmit the same sound in multiple different time slots. And these are tiny, tiny time slots. Um, so it's getting sent in, in multiple different time slots. So if there's interference or, or in one copy or whatever, it'll pick it up in the second copy. And this is happening in multiple frequencies, okay? Not just one at a time. So um, that's actually really good and makes it a little bit more reliable, or supposed to. Um, so this one in particular is in 2.4 gigahertz uh, band of the frequency spectrum. That's good and bad. Um, why is that bad? Um, it's bad because primarily there's a lot of Wi-Fi systems in the 2.4 gigahertz range. Um, also, Bluetooth also operates in the 2.4 gigahertz, and there's a bunch of other stuff. I'm sure you can Google and figure it out. So it's very crowded. Um, so a lot of um, 2.4 gigahertz wire systems are susceptible to a lot of other types of interference. Um, but they usually, um, the people that manufacture these types of systems, in this case, AKG, um, has tried to mitigate that as much as possible by implementing a system where the receiver is always constantly scanning um, for backup frequencies and always just scanning the RF environment to figure out which frequency, channel, and time slots are best to send on. So when it sends, it can, um, send in multiple different frequencies and multiple different time slots. So when you first turn it on and uh, when you first turn the system on, it's gonna automatically scan and pick the best channel and uh, frequency and the best, um, what do you call it? T channels to transmit and receive on, right? So when, when it does that, it'll sync up with the transmitter and it'll transmit the audio signal or whatever's coming through. And then at, at the same time, when it's on, uh, it's gonna scan the environment in real time all the time. I'm not sure exactly how much it doesn't really say, but it'll probably be somewhere between 100, somewhere around probably 100 to 300 times per second. And it, when it does that, it scans to figure out the best frequencies on those time slots and the time slots to transmit that on. So as you're using it, it can always be rolling and changing all the time and you won't even notice it or you're supposed to not notice it. Um, so make sure you keep that in mind. So that's pretty much how they re were able to fit these systems into, into almost any environment because the 2.4 gigahertz um, spectrum is, or part of the spectrum is license free and globally license free. So some people may know this, but Wi-Fi also runs on five gigahertz systems. Um, most of uh, the higher end systems will have 2.4 and five gigahertz, um, but Wi-Fi usually runs on both if you get like an all-in-one home type router. If you're more, if you have a more advanced and more advanced system and you can set it up on only five, definitely do that because it'll reduce the interference. Um, so make sure you keep that in mind. So I've had the privilege to use this um, for about three weeks. Use it a couple times a week and sounds okay. We'll play some clips for you in later. But um, on a digital system like this, it, it, they designed it to fit into almost any environment. Um, and it can work if your specific environment works out well for that. In the type of environment that I'm using it, um, especially in like a house or a corporate environment or even house of worship, um, it generally works out pretty well, mainly because I'm usually involved somehow with setting up my home network, right? I can turn off the 2.4 gigahertz and make it a little better. It, it, um, in corporate environments, it gets a little bit tough um, because you may not be the network administrator or you may not have the ability to influence that kind of stuff. So make sure you keep that in mind if you're gonna buy something like this. Generally, I'll go out and say this, um, the system generally works pretty well. Um, it's usually carefree, it's easy to operate. So for somebody who doesn't know anything about wireless systems, um, this is probably gonna be a 
good system for you depending on your use case, okay? So let's talk about that a little bit. So because this operates in a 2.4 gigahertz uh, band of the frequency spectrum, you need to make sure um, it's gonna work for you in your environment before you get it, okay? Um, in environments, such things as like, if you're a wedding DJ or whatnot, and you're always going to wedding venues and hotels and conference spaces and stuff like that, you probably don't wanna stick with this kind of system because you're always gonna be around people, okay? And those people are, are always gonna have smart devices. Um, and those devices are gonna be in um, trying to connect to the network and most people are gonna be connected to some kind of network um, if the network is free or whatnot, obviously. And that's gonna cause a lot less um, capacity for this system to be able to work, okay? Um, corporate environment, depending on your environment, may not be best to use, who knows? But if you can control the space um, and you have some ability to influence the, the other factors in the environment, it's gonna be great for you. Um, but these types of systems in 2.4 gigahertz range or uh, frequency spectrum are pretty much gonna be, as some people call it, point of sale, or in this case, point of um, usage units. What does that mean? You probably do not want to separate the receiver and um, the transmitter um, long distance. So if you have a stage, you want this thing to be pretty much next to the stage or on stage. So this type of unit is, is really best functional or best designed to be next to the stage, under the stage, on top of the stage somewhere, right next to the stage or wherever it's gonna be used because of the short distance required to use it, okay? Usually the better you keep it, with the closer you keep it within six feet, the better it's usually gonna work, okay? Um, other systems that are, that are digital, um, not in a 2.4 gigahertz uh, band, are, you can pr pretty much put one end at the uh, front of house or whatnot and you can use this on stage and that'll work fine. This type of system is gonna be very, very difficult to do that. Um, because of all the other stuff I just told you about. But also, think about it. If this is on, if this is on stage and you got a bunch of people in the, in, in the crowd and they all have smart devices, some people may have three devices, a phone, watch, iPad, whatever, that, that's all gonna be network traffic interference in between the transmitter and the receiver. If this is in front of house, on stage, think about it, which is why you wanna put this next to it. Other systems like the AKG DMS 700 or 800 or stuff like that, and you could probably get away with getting that um, near the front of the house or somewhere else. So make sure if you get this kind of system, make sure you keep it close together, and that's pretty much what it's designed for. Um, there's other people who make 2.4 gigahertz systems like this. It's gonna be like Audio-Technica System 10, um, Sure GLXD, uh, the Sennheiser EWD1, MD1, I don't know, there's EWD1 or EMD1, one of them. Um, but those are all pretty much follow the same basic principles, okay? Uh, but if you are going to get a digital system like this, make sure you get the same one in the same lineup so you can kind of link them together. Uh, don't try to operate this and Audio-Technica and the um, Sennheiser D1 and all that stuff in the same area because you're literally fighting yourself, okay? So try to keep it in that range if you can do that. But anyways, um, we'll play some clips for you and then we'll talk about it later. All right.
All right, guys. So um, I'm not sure how much well it's going to come through the um, recording or on YouTube or whatnot, because by the time you hear it, it's going to be sent from here to here, sent through the cable into a very bad <laughs> into a very bad XLR to uh, audio in converter. It's not going through anything fancy. Then it's going to get compressed in YouTube, and you're going to hear it on your computer, or laptop speakers, or whatever. It's not going to sound probably that great. But anyways, um, I'm going to tell you right now um, for. The price that you're paying, you're getting a lot. So this system is generally priced at 299 MSRP. And on Black Friday or whatnot or something, I think I saw it go on sale for like 220. Um, and I had it added to a card or something like that, but didn't check out. But I'm, um, Amazon Warehouse, one that we got this from, I think I got an alert for it being on sale for like once. It was on 170 or 180 or something like that. And then if you can get it on the Amazon Warehouse deals where it gets an extra 20% off, it's fairly cheap. So this system, if you could get the system for about 120, 130 bucks, it's pretty much gonna be the best system you can get for 120 bucks, okay? Um, if, I, if you're gonna pay $300 for a system, I would not pay $300 for this system. You could definitely pay $300 and, and get um, maybe a slightly used or a mint condition um, Audio Technica System 10. You could definitely get a Sennheiser uh, EWD1 system. You definitely can't get the Shure uh, GLXD system for anything less than probably like 350 or. 300 ish used. Um, so if you're gonna pay 300 bucks, I would definitely, I'm gonna tell you, do not buy this system. There's a lot better systems out there and pretty much doing the same thing, but just a little bit better um, for the same price range. But if you're gonna get, pay 150 bucks for this system, which is almost half the cost, you're not gonna get a better system like this. But in my opinion, the system is not that great. We'll be right back. All right, sorry guys, I'm baby duty. Um, so this is, you and me little bread. So like I said, um, this system is, let's tell you right now, it's not that great for 200 bucks. You can definitely get better systems for roughly that same price range. But if you can get it, it may work well if you just love the AKG stuff it works well. I'm not saying AKG makes bad stuff. Um, this one is really, really entry level. When they say entry level and beginner type system, this is pretty much entry level, okay? Um, they make good stuff like the DMS 700 is pretty good. The DMS 800 is fairly good. I've used the DMS 800 before and that's pretty, pretty good. Um, but for the price range, you can get better system. That's pretty much the point. And it's pretty much going to work the same with the handheld um, microphone. Um, we're, I know we talked about this one here, but the handheld one's probably going to be the same because I was talking mainly about the link quality. Um, like it's, the build quality is just not that good. The sound is pretty good, but it's not like quote unquote the best. One thing I find very interesting is um, on this little uh, Wi-Fi icon here that has that tells you pretty much the signal strength. Um, when you're using it, I can see I can see from far away. I placed it about 20 feet away when I was doing the uh, recording, and you can kind of see it like going in and out, in and out, like it's changing all the time. It's it's dropping like that. On the other systems, um, I've seen that happen a little bit on the Sennheiser system, but I didn't lose any link quality or anything like that. Um, I ha I didn't lose the link quality in this uh, demo either, but. Um, it just makes me worry a little bit, um, but not just that, the build quality is probably the biggest concern. I'm not sure how long it's going to last with it being dropped or on stage use or, or not touring, but just constant use all the time. Um, these antennas seem really cheap. <laughs> Actually, we've knocked this thing off multiple times before already and it just doesn't seem that great. And uh, I don't know. Anyways, the point is that the sound quality is good it's for since the digital system. Could it be better? Probably. Um, but that's my opinion. Hope this video has helped you guys out. If you can try to buy a system, um, go for it, uh, given everything that I told you. If not, then go for that too. But like I said, it really doesn't matter to me because we're just going to pack this up and return it to Amazon and say, hey, maybe you are going to buy this one. Who knows? I don't know how the Amazon return stuff works. But anyways, hope this video has helped you guys out, and I will see you guys next time. Peter, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.